Welcome to Cretani Entertainment. I'm Chris. And I'm Bree. And we just got back from Gen Con. I'm so tired. Let's go through our stuff and all the Warhammer we picked up. Okay, we're back from Gen Con, just in. And when I say just in, we just drove through the night from Indiana to get back home. Mm -hmm. About 16 hours drive. Yep. Uh, dropped off our rental car, picked up some groceries because we were out of food in the house, and ran straight to the game room to set up this video. So we have not staged anything properly. Uh, you saw from the intro bit kind of the pile of stuff we have. Uh, we wanted to go through you and show you the treasures that we found at Gen Con this year. For any of you who are curious about going to Gen Con, and maybe some things you might have overlooked that you can look up on people's websites and check out yourself. Yeah. So, we want to get this done. We're going to be relatively quick. We're not going to go too in-depth onto everything. We don't want to take up everybody's day uh, because we need a shower. We just drove through the night. We need a shower and a nap. And, a nap. Um, and then eventually, I guess we got to pick up our, our kids. Uh, and from, the dogs. Pick up our kids from their grandparents and pick up the dogs. But um, yeah, we, we wanted we great. wanted a nap before we did that So because it's a thing. Anyway, we went to Indianapolis to do Gen Con 2022, Gen Con 55. Uh, last time we were there was 2017. It was really exciting to be back. We had a fantastic time. Uh, four awesome days of gaming. I rolled my ankle on day one and walked around limping the entire convention, but it was worth it 100%. Legit. Uh, that said, when we rolled into town, we actually picked up a nail on the rental tire in Tennessee at about 2 a.m., uh, managed to get the car to limping all the way to Indianapolis, where we were able to get a new tire replaced. And while we were doing that, there was a hardware store across the street from the tire shop that we used. Yeah, Indy, you've been holding out on us, man. Uh, it's called uh, Menards or Menards? Menards, I think. It's, it's called proper. Menards. It is the, it's the, and I mean this in the best possible way. It's the Walmart of hardware stores. Yeah, it's got everything. This this hardware store had, I mean, it had a, a selection bigger than most hardware stores you've ever seen. I mean, it had uh, big enough areas that, you know, I know regular hardware stores sell things like cabinet doors and whatnot, but these were actually on display. It had that much space. Yeah. It was two stories. It had a phenomenal garden section. It had a toy section. It had groceries. It, I mean, you name it, this store had it. It was ridiculous and very, very dangerous because there's probably more than one Midwestern husband who said, yeah, honey, I'll go pick up the milk tonight and then disappeared into Menards for hours. I never saw him again. We also disappeared into Menards a little bit ourselves and we found uh, a number of things that we brought home. Uh, from Gen Con. I keep talking about one of these things. That's why I wanted to put it on here. It's not technically a Gen Con item, but we don't have this place down here in Florida. This is the Rust-Oleum 2X cover ultra matte perfect gray that I talk about on so many of our videos. Yeah. Uh, it is getting harder and harder to find down here in Florida. There's basically one hardware store that still carries it and it's up to about eight bucks a can. So I picked up three at about four bucks a can over at Menards. I probably should have bought more. I wondered if you were on this top on the way out. I was thinking about it. But anyway, we, we got some new spray paint for priming our models. A uh, wonderful color. If you guys can get it in your area, get it. You know, I'm just going to push this out of the way so we can get to the next thing here. Uh, and then we went to the toy section and we found... Uh, guys, a bubble? This is, this is a bubble shooter. This is really cool. I'm not going to dwell on this. It has nothing to do with the hobby. Our boys are going to love this. Uh, and, and we also found a bin of animals. Our boys are going to love this too. And uh, there's a non there's a non zero chance uh, one or two of these shows up in a D and D game one day, just I mean, to kind of fill in our stuff. You know. Uh, so that's our haul from Menards. Uh, we'll go ahead and get that all out of the way, and we'll jump into uh, our next item. In the intro of the video, we promised to show you our Warhammer call, uh, our Warhammer haul from Gen Con 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Warhammer, uh, the most popular war game uh, in the world uh, overall. Uh, some exceptions. The, uh, the new GW um, annual report indicates they're not doing so well in China. Apparently, Corvus Belly and Infinity rule China right now. I mean... Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, so, biggest game company, or miniatures game company by far in the world. Yeah. Uh, most popular game company by far in the world. Um, I started playing Warhammer back in 2002 mm -hmm. uh, with High Elves. I don't remember when you started playing. Do you remember? Uh, 2006? I think, 2006. Right. And now, they, the people have, have very strong opinions on Games Workshop throughout the world. Some love them. Some hate them. I'd say we're largely indifferent at this point in time. Yeah. Um, but this this really blew my mind. There's coupon books at Gen Con if you've never been. They give you these coupons here, and you go to different booths, and they give you things. Games Workshop offered, if you visited their booth, they would give you a free month of Warhammer Plus. <sighs> If, if you haven't heard anything about Warhammer Plus, it is an absolute garbage video subscription service. They build it as the next big thing in the hobby. They did some, well, I say the hobby. They consider Warhammer to be the miniatures hobby. Uh, you all know from watching our Age of the Grid battle reports and our One Page Rules battle reports and our Free Blades battle reports and our Star Wars Legion battle reports that Warhammer is not the hobby. 
miniature wargaming is the hobby. Uh, and there's some, some items in here that... Prove otherwise. It, uh, it, prove. Uh, it utterly blows my mind that the biggest, most profitable miniatures company in the world... Could only do that. ...offer just a coupon for Warhammer Plus. This right here is the clickbait of this video. Yeah. This video was a social experiment. I wanted to see if putting Warhammer in the title would draw more views. I've seen a lot of YouTubers say it does. You're probably all going to click away now, but I implore you to please not do that. Look at some of these other miniatures we were able to get. Expand your hobby a little bit. Look at these options. They're really, really cool. But this right here is all we came home with from Warhammer. Because frankly, for the largest miniatures company in the world to only offer you this at a convention like Gen Con is an insult to not only their customer base, it's an insult to other miniatures companies. Companies that are trying for your business and Games Workshop just assumes that they deserve it. Yep. And it's frankly an insult. It's also the reason that you and I haven't played Warhammer in about two years. Yeah. We have the miniatures. We use them for one page, rule, one page rules. I've been harping on this a while. This is an insult. I don't care how you shake it. This is a freaking insult. And I'm going to tell you why right now. Yeah. This is me destroying this coupon here. Get out of here. We bought a game. It's called Bloodfields. It's a skirmish game. I think they were German. Uh, Eastern European Eastern accents. Eastern European Eastern accents. Euro really nice guys. Delightful guys. Skirmish game. Plays on a relatively small board. Mm -hmm. um, the game they showed us was almost full size. They said it's about six minis a side, roughly, usually, when you factor in the points. Yep. Uh, we played with, uh, I think, three or four minis a side, right? I think we had four. Yeah. I had four. Um, so I, it was, you it was almost most of them, so I don't remember. Yeah. It was, it was, so it was almost a full size game. Plays very cleanly, very nicely. We were going to buy it. We were going to buy in a couple starter factions. Uh, I was asking about the rule book. Uh, you know, again, going back to Warhammer, you play Games Workshop, you pay, I don't know what it's up to now. 50 bucks. Uh, it's higher. It's higher. Oh, it's, is it higher it was now? higher. It was higher when we stopped buying them. It was 60 uh. for core rules when we stopped buying them. I think it's 65 or 70 now. Cool. Don't quote me on that. I haven't bought a Games Workshop core rule book in a while. The only one I got my hands on recently was from that Dominion set we got at half price uh, yeah. that we did a painting video on. Um, but this is all I ended up buying for Bloodfields. Put back the starter boxes we were looking at and was asking them about a rule book. And these guys looked me dead in the eye and said, our rules are all free online because we want you to play them. And he even said to me, put the models back. Do you have a 3D printer? And when I said, yes, we have a 3D printer, he said, go to my mini factory under the company Titan Forge. Check these guys out. It's called Titan Forge. Here's their logo. The rules for their game, Bloodfields, are free online. Um, their dice are kind of unique, but you could easily do them with a D6. Yeah. Uh, and they gave us these token sets absolutely free. Yeah. We bought the dice for them, and he told us to go to my mini factory. And print them so down. Told us we'd be paying about a third of the price to download the STLs and print them off ourselves, and we can do as many copies as we want. And they are a, they are They're, beautiful models. Th this is a tiny miniatures company mm -hmm. that told us not to buy from them because we could get a better deal. Yeah. Absolutely unbelievable, especially compared to what Warhammer was doing. They were then. like, here, come support our Patreon. We were like, sure, no problem. Check out Bloodfields on Titan Forge. Yes. Uh, other games that got our attention. Uh, we had both previously heard of Conquest. Yes. Uh, as a as a Warhammer fantasy replacement, almost. It's mm -hmm. a it's a army based game. They also have a skirmish based game. Uh, so there's this game, Conquest. By who makes this? Um, Parabellum. The company is Parabellum. We wandered over to their booth because I just kind of wanted to see it. I'd seen some of their models from a distance before. We saw them in a display booth at Gen Con. We walked over, and the guy looks at us, and he says, do you have the coupon book? Like, we hadn't even flipped for them in the coupon book. He says, do you have the coupon book? We said, yeah. Sure. He says, cool. If you want to do a demo, you're going to get free models if you do the demo. And we said, oh, yeah, we love free models. Let's do free models. We ended up playing less than a turn of their skirmish game demo because the guy was really busy at the booth and couldn't fit everybody in. We played less than a term. Got got a decent I idea of the basic rules. You know, I said yeah. basic rules in a war game. You're talking like, you know, move, shoot, attack, uh, and morale. Yeah. Your, your basic set of rules. Got a, a decent idea of that. And then he turns around and says, okay, give me your coupons. Um, here's a here's a box of models. This, this is not a model. This is not a promo fig. They gave me... A unit. A whole box of models. This is a $40 retail box of models they gave us for playing a turn of a demo. Mm -hmm. And then I said, hey, there's two of us. We have two coupons. And they gave us another one. We got one for their human faction and one for their elf faction. Because? We asked for those specifically because that right there was enough to sell us and say it's time to start playing Conquest. So we went ahead and bought the starter box for Conquest. It's got two armies in it. This game is, uh, I don't know if it's fully written by or just um, informed by Alessio Cavatore, who's written previous versions of Warhammer that were very good versions of Warhammer. So this was exciting to see. Uh, this box was $165. 
Um, he, he didn't know the exact points value off the top of his head, but he said it's a 2,000-point game normally and that the armies in this box should be in the range of, of around 1,500-ish points. This is almost two full armies for $165. You know you get for $165 at Games Workshop? Like, that model. Like 500 points. Or a super large model. Yeah. Uh, this is, and we get a super large model. These, these, models, these models are gorgeous. They come circle-based and with square bases because their skirmish game uses circle bases. And this way you just pop them out of their bases and play. Uh, really excited to get into this. Check out Conquest by Parabellum. Uh, put, put that off to the side. We've got a few more miniatures to go through here. Uh, also on miniatures, this is just something Bree happened to find. I love him. At a terrain booth, we found a, uh, a Witcher mini. we got a Geralt mini here. And he is a convention exclusive, and he was only ten bucks. And he was ten bucks. Yes, Games Workshop had a convention exclusive mini as well, and I, I have like, to, I have to imagine it's in the range of about fifty bucks. It's, it's between thirty-five and fifty, I'm sure. But anyway, we got this Geralt figure we can use in One Page Rules or D and D or wherever we want to use and it. And I will be painting him up as a Brie plays because I love me some Geralt. Also on miniatures, I just bought a paint. This is a paint I've been having a hard time finding this color on. It's, this is push it out of the way. It's, it's done. We talked about it. Um, Brie got a couple minis. I did. There's a group that does these little chibi minis. She got a little, a little chibi owl bear. A little owl bear. And she got a uh, not at all influenced by Final Fantasy's Black Mage um, that she will be painting up and naming Cutie Pie to match her Brie Plays uh, Black Mage character from the Brie Plays Final Fantasy 1 series. Yeah. We stopped by the DGS Games booth, who are the company that makes Free Blades. We've talked about Free Blades a number of times. And we walked away with several of their new releases. They have a Bandit Outrider. Very, very cool mini. Uh, we got this uh, Wolf Rider for the Erdogar faction. Uh, we got this Giant Bear for the Erdogar faction. Which also will be good in uh, D&D. We got this Bear Chick for the Erdogar faction who does something with the bear. We don't actually know. We didn't look at her rules. We just said, oh, it goes with it. Let's buy it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got this uh, Bard uh, Mini. And actually, we got two of them because it comes with alternate arms and heads that one of them is a demon and one of them is a, a regular human-y style caster. So, so we got them both so we can play them in both factions because I mean, we're crazy. So this this is what we will do with minis. We played the Conquest demo and bought into the game. We went to the Freeblades booth and said, hey, there's two versions of that. Let's buy them both. We don't skimp away from buying minis. No. But Never. Games Workshop is utterly ridiculous with their expectation that you're just going to give them their money for no effort. That's our free blade talk. We also went ahead and bought into another game. Well, we actually, have... you know, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. We got this little freebie here. Uh, it's a tentacle holding Thor's hammer for some reason. That's pretty cool. We'll use it for D&D or something. Uh, we got this free mini for signing up for... Uh, no, for scanning a QR code for a Kickstarter. Yeah. They said, hey, here's a free mini for this they game. they got their, um, new, their new factions coming yeah, out. M Mythic Ancients, I think it's called by Warlord Mythic Games. Mythic Americas. Mythic Americas. Yeah. And then they gave us one of these as well because there was two of us, so they gave yeah. us one of each. And I'll tell you guys, although Chris and I didn't buy into it, if you are into the native aesthetic or ancient aesthetic, go check that game out. That yeah, actually... Yeah, right now it's all Mesoamerica, basically. So yeah, there's like an Aztec-themed faction, a Mayan... They're going to expand cool them. Their Wendigo model, let me tell you, I was real tempted. It was going to be bad. If Honestly, if the Conquest guys didn't give us $80 worth of minis, this, that's the game we would have bought. Yeah. Uh, we also went in and stopped by. I've been eyeballing this one for a while. The Elder Scrolls called Arms Miniatures game. The minis are absolutely gorgeous. They had a starter bundle where you got basically the starter factions to play multiple devs. So a Dragonborn and some Draugr, some Stormcloaks, some Imperials, uh, books and cards to play some campaigns with them. We picked up some terrain accessories, uh, Elder, Elder Scrolls themes, pillars, plinths, uh, stone beds, and it comes with, and we haven't even opened it yet, an exclusive Dragonborn miniature uh, for free. Again, free mini, not a coupon to a terrible subscription online service. That doesn't have any new shows listed as coming up in the near future. And this one is super cool because not only does it have the versus mode, it also has a very cool, uh, what they call their delves mode. Which you can essentially treat, you know, the Draugr like an AI and, you know, maybe you can't find anybody to play with. You can play this one on your own. And it has AI rules and everything. Very cool. It was super fun. It's going to be great for Jules. Absolutely. Uh, so let's kind of wrap up the mini section here. We've got a lot of other things to show you and time is, uh, is a factor for the video because we don't want to bore everybody too much. But hopefully you're still with us after us uh, trash talking Games Workshop a little bit here and getting pissed off at them because there's a lot more cool stuff to come even if you're a Warhammer player. So we'll be uh, we'll be jumping to that uh, as we clean up. All right, you're a war gamer. You're playing Warhammer. You're playing Freeblade. You're playing One Page Rules. You're playing Conquest. Conquest. Um, uh, Star Wars Legion. Anything we play on this channel, we're going to be playing a lot more stuff on this channel as we go. We got some terrain. This company here called uh, Monster 
Uh, their slogan is Scary Good. Does this um, not Lego snap fit terrain. We only picked up one piece from them. It's their unpainted uh, wooden palisade. It comes with a number of, it comes with a, a clear 12 by 12 uh, base plate. Mm-hmm. And it comes with a number of things that you can use to customize and build your own uh, wooden palisade and an extra set of tiles. This was also a bonus. We bought this and they gave us this for free. I'm going to keep pointing that out because screw you Games Workshop, honestly. Other terrain. If you're a terrain person, we decided to do some thematic terrain. Over at Tabletop Scenics, who does wonderful MDF-style terrain, we picked up a Halfling Barn. Would be great for any war game or D&D. Yep. We picked up a Halfling Blacksmith. Look at the price on that. It's 11 bucks for this terrain. It's good-looking terrain, too. It needs to be painted. Yeah. We picked um, up Halfling Houses. We've got a whole little Halfling Village going on that we could attach to some human villages and have a whole thing going on. And this was, I mean, it was like 67 bucks for all of this. This, plus some trees we already have, is multiple scenarios for D&D. It's battlefields for war games. It's wonderful. It's awesome. Uh, kind of blowing through it pretty quick because, again, I don't want to take up everybody's day. And you're going to see it again. Manta Games Terrain Crate was there. Uh, they had a special uh, near the end of the con. Buy one, get one half off. So guess what? We bought two. We got this Crystal Peaks Camp. It comes with just some cool uh, accoutrement to build like a little camp. It's going to be great for D&D, great for free blades, and it's going to be usable in regular war games. Uh, check out the Terrain Crate. The Village Square. This is pretty cool as well. It's got like a, like a plinth or an obelisk. It's got a bunch of little stands and whatnot. And I was actually thinking about it after we bought this. This is not only good for our fantasy games. That's also going to be good for our Star Wars Legion games. That's good for everything, man. Yeah. Then we picked up some stuff from whatever company this was again. This is Monster Fight Club. I'm a little concerned that their names are so similar. (laughs) No, Monster is different. Monster Terrain is different from Monster Fight Club. Check out these chain link fences. There's 10 chain link fences here. They're pretty good size. This is going to be great for for, uh, Crisis Protocol and Legion. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Ice terrain. Everybody likes ice terrain. It comes with these two little neoprene, you know, mouse pad, mouse that pad material bases that are reversible, reversible, and some rocks and bushes for some ice stuff because we have some other icy buildings. It's going to be really cool. Uh, great company for pre-painted scenery. They have um, burnt out landscapes, ponds. They have urban stuff. They have sci-fi stuff. They have regular forest stuff. They got lots of options. And they've got a Kickstarter going on. Either Pro- probably always. Everybody's got a Kickstarter always. But they're actually doing um, some really cool modular buildings. For uh, like any of your Crisis Protocols or Batman, yes, or any of yes, those. some of them are going to be really cool when they come out. Um, yeah. But this was all the haul for our terrain. We got a lot of new terrain pieces to get built and painted up. You'll see them on the channel in future battle reports. Uh, there's still a lot more haul to go, so we're just going to move right into the next one after we clean up here. We've said great for D and D several times here, so let's talk about stuff that was great for D and D. They had a consignment shop at Gen Con, which was Did, awesome. Didn't know this was a thing. We found a couple things in there, but they we found this old. Area of effect template stuff for D&D. It was like five bucks. It's great for a um, a square grid. It was six bucks. Sorry, six bucks. We bought it on the Saturday. Great for D&D spell effects. If you're an RPG player, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Got some cool dice. Some for Freeblade, some for Julian. We're going to use this 26-sided uh, alphabet dice to um, work with our kids on stories and, and word association and stuff mm-hmm. like that. We picked up, a, what was it, a D24... D24, a, a D26, D- and a D30? Yeah. I don't know, some weird sized dices for Freeblades campaign stuff. They're also good for D&D if you're like trying to get people to roll for like, what do you find and shit like that. Stuff uh, like that. Uh, ah. Oh no, we lost our monetization that we don't no, have. No. Oh no. <laughs> uh, dice. Dice and more dice. This dice booth, they had a coupon in the book. Yeah. It said $2 for their classic RPG dice set. We got there and they were sold out of them. Another small company like Game, uh, unlike Games Workshop, another small company. You know what they said to us? They said we sold out of those, but we'll give you the better level one for like three bucks a set of dice. Four, four Sorry, bucks. four bucks a set of dice. But still, and he even said the coupon will work on all of them. So we said, screw it, let's get one of each. So now we got three more sets of D and D slash Free Blades dice. Speaking of D and D, deck of many NPCs. Uh-huh. Guys, if you have not checked out this company, okay. Okay, let me tell you about the you're, joy. You're not, you're not in frame. Yeah, hit point, hit point Press. They do the Deck of Many Things. That is the original Deck of Many Things. NPCs, the Deck of Many Spells, the Deck of Many Monsters, Deck of Many Weapons. Check and these critical, out. There's critical hits that they do. Oh, yeah. And you, you just draw them, and it's preset stuff. You can't think of an NPC. You draw an NPC. It's got stats in the background. It's glorious. Moving on. Uh... More dice. Where do we get these dice from? Those were free. These were free dice. Those were free dice with the other dice that are up there. Uh, not all of those, yeah, well, but, here, but close enough. Here's, just a bu- here's a bunch more dice. People were giving out dice like crazy. Okay. These, look at it. Look, it's so cute. It's a little gelatinous cube dice. 
I, uh, this, this, this was all the ones I paid for. This and this were the ones they gave me for free. This, oh no, this was also one they gave me for free. And then this I got for my belly dancing class. I know that one's so fun. So a bunch, bunch of dice. Yeah, she did a belly dancing class. They gave her a D20. Games Workshop gave it a free month of Warhammer Plus. Oh no, here's the big one. All right, okay. All right, all right. Well, no, there's, there's more. Dwarven Forge. You ever seen Dwarven Forge terrain? Dwarven Forge makes these awesome modular terrain tiles. They're gorgeous. And you, you put them together, you build your own dungeons. They look fantastic. They're ex they're crazy expensive. They're gorgeous. They're, and they're absolutely. Worth it. They're if we didn't painted. if we didn't play so many games, we would have a lot more Dwarven Forge terrain. But these, they're the same thing. They're free. The little hidey hole terrain pieces. Just to sign up for an announcement about their upcoming Kickstarter. Yeah, which, they, just you know, said, they said, here, here's a couple tiles. Those are fantastic. If you're independently wealthy, we absolutely would back. Fantastic for D&D. Probably should have gone in terrain, but we didn't put it there. Uh, Galadoria Games. Three sets of very nice uh, resin tables and chairs for like bars and inns for like a D&D campaign. It was like 13 bucks. I'm thinking we could do a cool uh, bar fight. Galadoria Games. Same thing. Terrain accessory kit. This was like their full tavern terrain accessory kit. It's got like wine racks and a cask and all sorts of stuff. This was a little more pricey. I think this was 45 bucks, but it's, it's a ton. It's a whole set in. Um, we'll get to the big one in a second. Yeah, that's fine. This paper. company. Lots of paper. This is really, really cool. These are mega dungeons on eight and a half by 11 paper. Um, these are all different ones here. We got all four that they offer. It's like the city, the catacombs, the sewers. And, and they level on each other. So if you could have a town... You can do it, and you can but they, map they, it around and they, make it different. Yeah, there's a there's hundred unique two-sided sheets in here, and you put them all together in any way you want, but you can form them into a mega town, or you can just use the sheets you need for your specific scenario. These are basically modular maps. terrain maps. Yeah. I mean, a little bummer that they're just paper without lamination, but we can make that work. You know, we'll get a piece of Plexi, put it over it or something. But these were really, really cool. These are very, very useful for a D&D. &D. And I think all of those came to, like, 50 bucks? No, no, it was 75 for all this. Oh, it's 75? But they're, but they're fully printed out, double-sided. Dungeon Crawl Classics. I'm so happy! We got the Dungeon Crawl Classics core rule book. For, Look how for, thick that is! For 10 bucks. This is, this is crazy. Absolutely insane. 10 bucks. And then they're like, oh, by the way, Pick a module for free. A dollar. The, the, oh, sorry. It was a dollar. It was a dollar. It was a dollar. My bad. Pick a module for a dollar. Because usually, and here's a crazy one, usually their modules are nine ninety nine. Yep. And they're like, you bought a $10 book, so you got a $10 module for a dollar. A dollar. Awesome. Amazing. Guess what? We're not done yet. There's still more to show you. We're going to jump to miscellaneous <laughs> junk now uh, because it doesn't really fit into any other category and it's just, it's here. Bree got herself a neoprene mat. She's going to put it on her computer desk. It's got some fairies. Everybody does sexy fairy chicks. Nobody does sexy fairy guys. Actually, there was a booth that did those. Oh, well, I was just, you know, in general, speaking about yeah. artists. Yeah. Everybody wants to all sexy, sexy fairy chicks. Who can blame them? But still, not the point. Uh, all right, so, uh, other other miscellaneous stuff. Brie got tea. Great company. This tea awesome was, company. This, this tea was Games Workshop a little expensive. I don't want to talk the about the tea. The tea absence is so, so I worth it. I don't want to talk about the tea. Here, I'm going to throw them out. Woo! Trays. For, yeah. These individually were, little divided yeah, trays. These were just a couple of bucks. A couple of bucks, uh, divided trays. We just picked a few of them up to uh, just use for, like when we play games that need tokens, just throw the tokens in there and make our lives a little easier. Yeah, keep them all separate. And uh, then... Other miscellaneous. This is miscellaneous free stuff. Bree did some kind of finger knitting class where she learned to knit with her fingers. It was a whole thing. And then she got a belly dancing skirt thing. What do you call these? They're hip scarves. Hip scarves, yeah, for belly dancing. Uh, there's a fan in here for reasons. Uh, this is a fake mustache and a trophy, so Brie can go Cause incognito. Because I, I made it through my belly dancing class. It Brie, was three hours. Yeah, Brie can go incognito. <laughs> uh, Game Trade Magazine was there giving out Game Trade Magazines. The Hero, Hero Quest, Quest guys were there. They're like, hey, do you play Hero Quest? And we're like, yeah, we bought all sorts of Hero Quest stuff. And they're like, here you go. Here's some new artifacts and a wolf monster to use for the game. Enjoy it. It's free. Oh, by the way, you like designing your own dungeons? Hey, here's a whole pad. Of dungeon maps. Go make us some dungeons. Enjoy enjoy Hero Quest. And we're like, yeah, we love Hero Quest. Fantastic. Awesome. awesome. Uh, you got some books. Those are miscellaneous. Ooh, yeah. Grab, grab yeah, your books. books. I know we're blowing through this quickly because, again, don't want to make this video take forever and uh, bore the one of you who's still watching. Uh, we found this in the consignment shop. It's got some books in it. Books that Brie would like. Uh, she can talk about it in another video if she wants. We just, yep. you know. And then, also these woo! books. These, but there's a whole big thing with these books. We'll do a video if you want on these books. We'll review these books later in a video. I'll let okay. you. I'll let you take the lead on that one. Yeah. I know nothing about this author, but you were really excited. So yeah, let's go her. for it. Um, 
That's the miscellaneous crap. Yeah. Let's get into the Pokemon crap, which Ooh, is mostly Pokemon. for Julian, and then we'll talk board games. Yeah. Pokemon's gotta buy them all. Yeah. We've we... got a lot of Pokemons. This bummed me out. We signed up for Play Pokemon together uh, just so we could get a feel for the game so we could play with Julian. Uh, they gave us two free decks, and uh, unfortunately, the deck I had, a water bottle exploded uh, in my backpack. We did not realize it, and it ruined uh, the little deck. I mean, there's nothing really valuable in the deck, but... Kind of a bummer, but we still got we still have one of the decks intact, so we can play with Julian. He has a huge collection of cards anyway, so it's not like I can't build a deck out of what he has. Yeah. But we got this deck here. Um, we got a couple booster packs from that same event. So yeah. for four bucks, we got four bucks each. We got two boosters, which are normally four bucks retail, plus the two decks, one of which we unfortunately destroyed. Um, we? Was, yeah, we, we. I'm pretty sure you, you bumped it. <laughs> um, we just found a bag of miscellaneous Pokemon's cards. And uh, we bought it for Julian. We were actually looking for a Charmeleon uh, because we found him a Charizard at a different convention and he has a Charmander. He didn't have a Charmeleon. We just figured let's gamble on a bag of, of you know commons and uncommons. It's, it's nothing special. But it's a lot of new cards we can give him. He's going to be excited about it. Um, but we did, however, at another booth find the Charmeleon he was missing for a dollar. So cool. We're going to give that to Julian. He's going to be super excited about that. Uh, we went ahead and found these nice little, we're probably going to save these for Christmas. Yep. Some not Lego Pokemon stocking stuffers. So those are pretty cool. This one is one of the bears that keeps beating the crap out of us in Smash Brothers. Yeah, the bear. <laughs> um, so then we got um, another random. Just a, just a pack of energy. Yeah. It's just a pack of. Well, there's another one. I think they're mixed in with the other yeah. ones already. But just a pack of energy. I don't. We don't know how many Julian had, so we just got more. We got this cool gaming box for Julian. This is going to be able to hold four decks of Pokemons. He can hold some excess energy over there. He can put tokens and whatnot in these. And we went ahead and got him. Four sets, 65 sleeves each with different Pokemons on the back of each one. So we can, as a family, build four decks together, mm -hmm. put them in here, and Julian would always have four, four decks ready to go. Which is awesome. So uh, just, just some fun stuff to make sure we get for the kid. We didn't really get much from Alcum because he, he's two. He's tiny. We got him a squishy D12 because he's a little barbarian. He is. Um, but otherwise, didn't get a whole lot from Alcum. But we have a ton of board games to talk about. So let's transition into the board games. This is going to be the longest part of the video, I think. Let's talk board games. We're going to blow through a lot of these really quickly. Um, we did a quick demo on a game called Poo, which is about monkeys flinging poo at each other. Uh, it was like 15 bucks. We didn't, we didn't really want to pay that. No. But we found it for five bucks in the consignment shop. What, what? I hope it's good. Nacho Pio. This is cool. This bag is like a bag of Doritos, and this bag is the carrying bag, so it's got a zipper on the inside. And basically, you pull nachos with different numbers and things on them. You try to steal nachos from other people and have the biggest nacho plate at the end. So that's that's pretty cool. It's a good pretty family game. A uh, legendary expansion. We've got Marvel Legendary. Julian likes it. Uh, we actually found this at a game store down the street from Gen Con that we uh, went into on Wednesday when we were in town. Mm -hmm. um, the green sticker minute was half off, so this will make a nice little stocking stuffer for Christmas. Short Order Hero. Um, it's kind of like overcooked, but probably not quite as chaotic. <laughs> you, you you run a little short order restaurant. You try to make uh, dishes to make your customers happy, get good tips, and, uh, and win the game. So kind of a kind of a neat little game there. Land versus sea. Kind um, of a Catan. Yeah, it's it's almost like a two player tile laying Catan is kind of how it's described. Yeah. We haven't actually played it yet. It's still in the shrink wrap. Hope it's good. See good reviews on it. Bloomtown. Uh, again, haven't played it. Worker placement game. Bree and I love these. Uh, got good reviews. Found it in consignment shop for what like seven bucks. Yeah. Like, something stupid like that. Yeah. So we'll give it a try. Seven bucks. You really can't go wrong. All right, other games, other games. Oh, here's a weird one. Ready for this? eBay has a board game. It's called Buy It Now. It's a Gen Con exclusive. We were randomly walking through a hall, and the eBay booth people were like, do you have an eBay account? And we're like, yeah. And they're like, can you write down your email? We're just checking for duplicate accounts. And we're like, why? And they're like, we'll give you a free board game. And we're like, it's probably terrible, but a free board game is a free board game. So Bree starts putting an email. I said, I have, a, I have a different eBay account, too. Do you want me to put mine down? And she goes, no, I'll just give you a second one. So we got two of this game. It's probably terrible, but it was free. And hey, it maybe we'll give one away. It can't. Well, maybe we'll see what we're gonna do with it. Let's see what. Let's see our place first. I don't want to give away garbage. Um, maybe uh, you know, the channel is garbage. I don't want to give away garbage. Oh, we'll okay. play. We'll play I it see. first. Maybe There's we'll do a let's play the eBay game. <laughs> nice. But you know what? You know what? Better than a month of Warhammer Plus. I mean, still. Even if it's terrible, we get those out of there. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm running out of space on this side. <laughs> we found a game from Malcolm. It's called Dagron's Breath. Dagron is just how we say dragon in this house for some reason. I think we're all on crack. I don't know. 
Uh, I don't know, you uh, you build a tower and you try to guess which gems are going to fall and you knock them around. It's a kid game. It's Haba. If you're not familiar with Haba, Haba makes wonderful kids game. If any of you has kids, this will be what our like fifth or sixth Haba game we yeah. got for the kids. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're always a lot of fun. And um, I mean, we're, we're, we play them with the boys and they really enjoy them. So life's good. Um, Tinderbox. Just a quick little uh, on-the-go game. Comes with a little pair of tweezers. You build a little campfire based off what the card says. Just something we can tag along to like restaurants or whatnot and keep the boys in, uh, entertained. Yes, which is always important. Same well, thing with this one. Walkie talkie. Um, this had like colors and letters, and like you had to Match say a, say either a color that a letter was or something. It was a thing. It was like a matching game. It was like a little thinking matching game. Uh, abandon the artichokes. Um, I want to choke the chicken. Bree wanted to abandon the artichokes. Here we are. We got to abandon the artichokes. <laughs> It's a fun little game where you've got a handful. It's like it's like a reverse deck builder. Yeah. Um, you've got a handful of artichokes and you're trying to get rid of them all. Each of the different little uh, vegetables in there has a different ability to help you get rid of your artichokes. Uh, and oh, because we uh, we bought it, they they got us a extra vegetable. Yeah, uh, a new vegetable game. to add to me. It's still better than a month of Warhammer Plus. I'm sensing a scene here. Arch Rabbles. Uh, uh, this game is all right. I'm hoping it's I'm hoping it's deeper than the demo. Uh, honestly, Bree was really excited about this one. It's a game about knitting. It's kind. It's kind of a. It's like a non-competitive worker placement game. Yeah. So like you you are you're moving your your own figure on your own tile to generate abilities, but you're not blocking your opponent by doing that. So it's kind of like a non-competitive worker placement almost, where you collect different yarns and you make different patterns and you score points. It's not a bad game. Uh, I'm concerned about the replayability in the long term, but we only got to demo. Well, a, we only demoed it, so I'm sure not all the rules were correct. Uh, and two, um, there are multiple uh, different characters you can be. And there are uh, other the expansions we can get later for new different oh, types oh, of Oh, fantastic. Things. I'm sensing your sarcasm, sir. It's unappreciated. No, no, we'll, we'll play this and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, we have two other... Biggins. ...purchases that we're really excited about. Uh, yeah. So let's get this all cleaned up and organized and we'll, we'll do those and close up the video. So you remember when we were all kids and there was that game that you'd like lay out on the board and you'd like shoot the things at the other person's castle? Yeah. Like, but it wasn't Battle Masters. It was, uh, what was it called? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. There was a sick game where you'd do that. There's a new sick game. It's a modern version of it. It's called Catapult Feud. This thing is, it looks like, it looks like violent angry birds. It does. So, so you set up a little castle. And you basically try to knock the other guy's soldiers down. So you build your castle to protect your soldiers. And you're across a board from each other. And you fire stuff out of a catapult at each other. You're not just across a board from each other. You're across a table from and each other. So you're across a board. A table is a board in our world. So they also have an expansion. So, of course, we bought that sight unseen. Because yeah. nothing matters. We absolutely wanted this. And you know what? You know what? We bought these two together. Yeah. They gave us a free month of Warhammer Plus. No, they didn't. You're right. They gave us something useful. Yeah, they gave, they us, gave us some of this, some extra dice and extra cards, and also a mats. play a play mat. Yeah, or two play mats. I don't know how many play I think mats it's are in two there. Two play mats. Then we can put our little castles on. Hey, Bree. Yeah. Better than a month of Warhammer Plus. I mean, you're not wrong. You're really not excited wrong. about this game, but there's not much to say about it. You build a castle, and you shoot crap at each other. We will probably record this one just so we can show you guys. Oh, that'd be amazing. Chris and Julian. Flinging stuff at each other. That'd be amazing. Let's get this cleaned up and let's go to our, our coup de gras here move. Mm -hmm. So I loved, for all the crap I've given Games Workshop so far, I loved Warhammer Underworld Season 1 and Season 2. Yes. That would be Shade Spire and Night Haunt. Yes. I loved those. They were Fanta very good games. Fantastic game. Preset Warbands. Hex board. Uh, short. Plays quickly. 30 to 45 minutes. Um kind of some you, you have a, a command deck that manipulated your abilities you had different objectives to achieve during the game so a lot of times two games weren't exactly the same mm -hmm. my problem with warhammer underworlds um is they turned it into too much of a rotating deck builder yep uh it turned into a magic s thing when they released their third season they said hey by the way all of the universal cards from season one are now invalid and when they released season four, they said, hey, all of the universal cards from season two are now invalid. And uh, I don't play that game. I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I'm not a fan of that. But I think we found a villain, a better Warhammer Underworlds. I, and yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying better. Yeah. And uh, I'm really excited by this one. We played a demo on this one. It was super cool. Um, it's got a sudden death victory condition. Somebody gets to five victory points, they win the game. Um, I accidentally gave Bree the win when we were doing the demo <laughs> because I was so focused on scoring objective. Um, I did not see that I pushed her into a location to get an objective. 
Uh, it is called Super Fantasy Brawl. This is fantastic. Um, Objective-based game. You score points for killing each other. You score points for meeting the objectives. What's nice about it on both those fronts, on the killing each other front, when you kill somebody's uh, figure, it can be recycled back onto the board. You don't mm -hmm. get into a situation where you kill so much that somebody falls behind and can't possibly compete in the game. And the objectives uh, can be scored by either player, and you score them at the start of your turn. So your opponent always gets a chance to react. So you could get onto an objective, and your opponent goes, oh, no, you're going to score two points for that, because the objectives actually waver in points as well, depending on how long they've been in play. And you can say, oh, no, my opponent's going to score two points and win the game, and you might have to completely change your battle plan for a turn to get them off of the objectives and claim it. Yeah. I'm really excited by this game. It's got... I think they're 54 millimeter scale. They might even be slightly bigger than that. Um, but there's there's big, gorgeous miniatures. This box comes with six miniatures. Um, you build your own team. It comes with a nice hex board. You and, and it comes with uh, decks of cards and whatnot. And each each figure has six cards uh, that they come with. Mm -hmm. and, and you shuffle. And not all of them are specific to them, but most of them are specific to that character. Only that character can use those cards. And then there are reaction abilities that they bring to the table as well. Uh, and all you do to build a warband for this game is you pick three of the champions and you take their six cards and then you shuffle all those cards together and you have an 18 card deck. And, that, and that's all you do. You're not you're not fiddling with points. You're not fiddling with deck size. You're not fiddling with any of that stuff. And because you have all of these options um, just from the core set, um, I mean, obviously, this is going to be a little skewed by the fact um, that you'll be having two people playing the game. And Brian, grab me your phone real quick. I need to do some math real quick. Um, just from the core set alone, you figure you have six figs, mm -hmm. you have 120 possible combinations for your war band. Uh, and cause you figure, abilities. cause you figure if you're the first person to pick, there are six to choose from, um, well then your opponent will pick them and there'll be four to choose from, but theoretically you have six, then five, then four. That's 120. Mm -hmm. Um, beyond that. This game expanded. Um, Bree needs to step out from it. The cat is making a lot of noise. She's going to go figure out what's going on. Uh, he's missed us for a week. He might just be being weird. Uh, but Bree will, Bree will come back eventually. So that's just from the core set. There's six different figures in here. The core set was very reasonably priced at $55. Uh, it, it, conversely, Warhammer Underworlds is, I think, almost up to $100 um, for a starter set that has two factions that always have the same models. Uh, additionally, at Gen Con, they had some tokens. So these are like the victory points and like the blood tokens and whatnot. So just, just better quality tokens. I, I always am a big fan of better quality tokens. Um, there are spots on the board that are filled in by statues. So they had a statue box set going on. So of course we bought that because these could be used in other war games too. They, they look really good. I, I like these a lot. Um, and then they were talking about how the game is going to be expandable. Uh, the game is going to have 24 um, champions total. Which means theoretically... If you always have your pick of the litter, there are over 12,000 combinations for what your team can be. You could play this game for years and never play the same team twice if you didn't want to. Uh, absolutely outstanding, because again, the, the math on that is you kind of figure, uh, you start with 24 to pick from, then you have 23 to pick from, then you have 22 to pick from. So on the high end, you have you know 12,144 different options, which is insane. Um, so, I mean, of course we bought them all. So all of the expansions were available at Gen Con. We have all 24 heroes for Super Fantasy Brawl. I don't even know what most of them are. It doesn't matter. This dude's like a cool skeleton guy. Uh, this is like a pirate musketeer. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with this chick. She looks like she's running some kind of sick Wild West brothel. It's, this, is, this is awesome. These figs are gorgeous. This game is fantastic. And it came with a deck of uh, hollow cards. Uh, you know, it's just some foil, fancy, shiny cards uh, to represent the champions with. So that, uh, all in all, that is our Gen Con haul. Uh, I apologize for the clickbait at the beginning of the video uh, about Warhammer. Uh, if you stuck with us uh, from then because you were interested in seeing a Warhammer haul, um, I thank you. I hope you saw something that maybe you might want to look up. Um, this, by the way, is uh, Mythic Games, who does this uh, Super Fantasy Brawl. If you're a fan of Warhammer Unrolls in any way, check this game out. Um, most of that's our Gen Con haul. We probably spent way too much money, but we've got a lot of hobby here. Uh, we've got a lot of upcoming content for the channel. We've got a lot of things to play with our kids, which is, you know, the main, the main goal of, uh, of us playing games together. So I hope all of you are playing some games. Um, I hope you got something out of this video. 
We thank you for watching as always. Like and subscribe for more content. Hit the bell button for notification. And we'll see you all next time.